So welcome to this video about how to calculate Hubble's constant. Now first, what is uh, the Hubble constant? So here we've got an equation which is V equals H naught times D. Now the H naught here is the Hubble constant and this is the rate the universe is expanding at. So that's the expansion rate of the universe which is our Hubble constant. Now what we want to do is to be able to calculate that. So what do we need to do or the measurements we need to take in order to calculate that Hubble constant? Well, first thing we need to do is get the distance to a galaxy. So in this equation, D represents the distance to a galaxy. So we need to get that first. There's a few different ways you can actually get the distance to a galaxy. Um, two notable ones here. So if the galaxy is fairly nearby, you can use variable stars. So the rate that they vary, if they're regular variable star relates to how bright they are. So their absolute magnitude relates to their period. So we can calculate a distance that way because we know how bright they should be. We take a measurement of them and we can work a distance. The same thing's somewhat true for supernova. So type 1a supernova will typically always explode with the same energy. Therefore, they have the same absolute magnitude. We take a measurement of the apparent magnitude and we can work out a distance by the change between the two really. So this acts as a standard candle. So we can get a more distant galaxies from these supernova explosions because they're, they can outshine you know, a whole galaxy. So they can be very bright events. So if we've got the distances to our galaxies in some way or another, we then need the velocity of the galaxy. So in this equation here, V represents the velocity that the galaxy is moving with respect to us. Now, how do we do that? Well, this top galaxy is not moving with respect to us and its spectrum of light is not shifted in any way. But if that galaxy was to move away from us, we would get a Doppler shift of the light it was giving out and it would make it appear redder. And we call that a red shift. And we can calculate or measure the amount of shift in that wavelength, which then correlates to a velocity. So we can work out a velocity of the galaxy by looking at the Doppler effect of the light coming from that particular galaxy. So once we have those two, we can actually create a fairly simple plot. So if we plot the distance against the velocity for all of those galaxies, if we go get lots and lots of galaxies, we would get something that looked a little bit like this. So the, the yellow pointers are individual galaxies. And we've got a bit of a trend there. So we can actually draw a line of best fit through that. And the gradient of that line is our H0, which is the Hubble constant, because we are dividing the velocity by the distance that then gives us our Hubble constant. Now, when we do do this with lots of galaxies, we end up with a Hubble constant of around about 70 kilometers per second per megaparsec. So it's a velocity per distance. And what that tells us is that the galaxies that are further away have uh, are traveling faster and it's 70 kilometers per second faster per megaparsec further away that they are in the universe so we get this trend here now it can be really useful for understanding things like the age the shape and the fate of the universe so here there's three different universes different curvatures so you've got hyperbolic flat and um, spherical universe and they all have different fates so if we can work out the expansion rate or calculate the expansion rate of a universe, we can get a good understanding of what the fate might be. So is it going to continue to expand forever? Is it going to slow down and recollapse? Or some other scenario? So taking that measurement can help us understand things like this. But it's probably worth noting that although it's called the Hubble constant, it isn't necessarily a constant. So it is likely to change through time as the universe evolves. So it's not a constant. H naught, what we've measured is the Hubble constant at this current time, but it might not be the same going forward. So thank you for watching.